is brought to you by APQS, handcrafted quilting machines. Arafil, Arafil Italian thread, perfectly suited for all your quilting projects. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Havel Sewing, when you need to cut it close, choose Havels. Moda, make something quilty with Moda fabrics. Hey everybody, my name is Mary Fonz and you are watching Quilty. We're glad that you're here this week uh, and every week. And this uh, episode today is going to be uh, focused on quilting. We're gonna do more shows on quilting the quilt because we, we, we focus so much on patchwork on this show because patchwork comes first and we really love doing patchwork, but you know, Quilting's a pretty important part of making a quilt. Uh, and so we're gonna talk today about stitching in the ditch. What is it and how do you do it? And we're also gonna talk about changing the foot on your machine uh, to that walking foot, which is a really wonderful invention. So if you take a look here, I have prepared this little quilt sandwich, okay? This is a, a, a quilt block, a little sawtooth star, and we have some batting underneath, and then we have some backing fabric, and that is the quilt sandwich that we all know and love. Okay, so I have basted this for machine quilting. When we baste for machine quilting, which basting means to hold something together loosely, temporarily, we baste with uh, safety pins when we're gonna machine quilt. So we've got our safety pins in here. I don't need many, this is a pretty small little sandwich. Um, and the ditch, I wanna point out what the ditch is. This is the ditch. The ditch, it refers to the seam, basically, uh, between one piece of patchwork and another. So this would be the ditch. This would be the ditch. It's that, it's that, like, cre crevasse, <laughs> that crevice. Um, where two pieces of fabric meet, okay? And and one way that you can quilt your quilt once you have your top done and your batting's there and your backing's there and you've basted it all together, you can stitch in the ditch. And you just basically, you are following the lines of your patchwork with your um, quilting. And that's, that's all you do. You're not doing any fancy flowers. You're not sewing straight lines all over in some grid or diamonds or circles. You're stitching in the ditch. You're just following the patchwork lines, okay? So we're gonna do that um, right now. So let's go over to the machine and I'm gonna change the foot out and show you um, how that works so you understand. All right, so this is a walking foot and it is a really um, heavy little piece of piece of equipment here. Um, but it, it is a beautiful thing when you're a machine quilting and we're gonna put it on the machine right now. This is a very large screwdriver. <laughs> I use a screwdriver for my toolkit uh, rather than the screwdriver that comes with the machine. We love baby lock, we love all our tools, and we know that maybe it's just the, that, that screwdriver is smarter than I am, I don't know. But I always feel like I need a little bit bigger of a tool to get this thing on. So take that as you will and you, use what works for you. So what we do, and the first thing is to turn off your machine, because you don't want it, you know, starting to, you don't want to hit the pedal and hurt yourself. You release your presser foot, okay? Take off that, that little presser foot, if, if you've got one on, set it to the side. And then you get your handy dandy screwdriver. All right, so this screw here, this is why I like this big screwdriver. Oh yeah, see, you just like start unscrewing that guy and that mechanism comes off. I know that mechanism has a name, but it's not that important what it is. <laughs> Maybe we'll find out. And we take our screw off completely. Please don't lose that screw, that would be bad. And we bring our walking foot over and this little lobster claw fits up on that bar. And your manual will always tell you, you know, how to place it on and how to do this. And it fits right against that bar got sort of two points of contact there. And then you replace your screw. Okay, so you kind of get it started with your hand. And then your Mr. Screwdriver comes back in. And you tighten it, and you tighten it pretty tight. I mean, just like any screw you would ever screw into anything, including like wood or, you know, I don't know, metal, whatever. You know, you don't want to strip the screw, so don't be, you know, screwing it so hard in there that it it feels like you're forcing it, but you definitely want it to be snug, okay? So you make it snug, it's on there, beautiful. You can turn your machine back on and set your needle to the proper position, depends on what machine you've got, and you're ready to stitch in the ditch, okay? So let's let's do a little bit of it and, and, and do this. So I'm gonna put my quilt sandwich into my machine and you're gonna sew in the the shallow side of the ditch, okay? 
I am going to drop my presser foot. I'm going to start a little bit off of my patchwork. And here we go. And I'm just stitching right in that crease, basically. Now, one thing you want to remember is that what you're doing on the top is going to show up on the bottom. So if you're not that confident with your quilting, pick a thread that's like really neutral, that, so on the back it doesn't show that much. Um, and what I would do is lower my needle, raise my presser foot, turn it, drop that presser foot, and keep going. And you just continually keep stitching. And, and you could really do a lot of this without ever changing your, without ever cutting your thread, okay? So I've got one that's all finished, and we're gonna bring it out here. It's not too bad. Um, I uh, would recommend a couple things before we go. Uh, save these little parts. Don't lose those. Please don't lose them. Put a little envelope near your sewing center. Keep all that stuff together. Put it in a box. Your machine comes with a little box to hold all those feet. Really, really important you don't lose those parts because they can be expensive to replace. So anytime you're messing with your presser feet, keep them in the same place. And also, um, stitching in the ditch is really easy to follow. It's good for maybe your first quilt, but you should also know that it, it's fairly time consuming. To go around each one of the things that you do, you might actually find, as some beginner, quilters do, machine quilters, that you would rather do like straight lines, just straight up grid, something like that. It may go a little bit faster. It might be harder for you to keep those lines straight, but that actually might go faster for you than stitch in the ditch. This is just a, a way to, to do machine quilting that looks pretty darn nice because you're just following the lines, okay? So that is stitching in the ditch, a lesson on it anyway. There's a lot more we could say about it, and we will on future episodes of Quilty. So thanks for watching, and check out the magazine. It's so good. It's so good. And so are you. Okay, see ya. Quilty is brought to you by APQS, handcrafted quilting machines. Aurafil, Aurafil Italian thread, perfectly suited for all your quilting projects. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Havel's Sewing, when you need to cut it close, choose Havel's. Moda, make something quilty with Moda fabrics.